Okay, so hello and welcome back to another Unity tutorial. In this video, we're going to be focusing in on some more game architecture tips. Just like I did for my last video, a lot of people seem to really enjoy that video. Got a lot of comments, people were saying they want more. So I'm going to do some more videos on this topic. This one's going to be focused mainly on the user interface and, you know, how to design UI code. So I hope you guys are looking forward to it. Let's get into the video. But of course, first I've got to thank my patrons, a special thanks to Some Hobo 101, Average Morning, Hades Zorko, Renee, Evgeny, Art Farrell, Bud Ray, and Marie Baldwin. If anyone else is able to help support the channel monetarily, the link to my Patreon is down below. If not, there are links down below to social media such as Twitch, Twitter, and Discord. If you could help me out by following any of those, it'd be greatly appreciated. And also, if you could create an account on our website, it's completely free. Go have a look around. We've got loads of new features. There's no point me listing them here because it's always going to be changing and adding to it. But there's ways for you to ask for help, give suggestions to the community, and just generally be a part of the community. So it'd be greatly appreciated if you could go and create an account there. Thanks. Okay, so for this example, I've made a simple scene. We've got the player character, we've got a health bar with 100 health, and we've got a fire blast spell. It's not very fiery, but it's just a projectile. It's going to fall and hit them on the head. I thought it's just the easiest way to get this uh, demo done. So what happens is I'm going to enable use gravity. It's going to fall, hit them on the head. It's going to deal 10 damage. The health bar is going to go down, and essentially the UI is going to update based on the player's health. Now, after I've shown you this example, I'll show you the code for how this works. I'll explain, you know, why you do it this way, how you can easily unit test this, and essentially detach the UI and still have it work perfectly, okay? So, if I just tick enable gravity, it's going to fall, hit him on the head, and now he's on 90 health, and it's gone, okay? So, that's a simple example, obviously. You might have games where you've got mechanics like this, where something hits the player and it deals damage, and obviously it might work fine in your game, and I've had it in the past where I've designed it a lot worse than how I have here, but the way I've done this allows it to be easily expandable and testable, so I'm going to show you how I set it up like this. Okay, so now I'm going to show you all the scripts I use for this demo. I'm going to show you about the uh, collisions, the health, the UI and how it all works together, okay? So if we go to the Fire Blast, that's the first place to start, I guess. We've got this projectile. It's got a Unity Sphere Collider and Rigid Body, just normal stuff. I've made a script here to handle doing event calls on a collision. It's not too too complex, really. If you look here, all it is is, um, if we just look at this code, th this allies thing, it's something specific for the game. We can ignore that. All, all it does really is on trigger enter, it raises um, an event, and this event passes through collision data, and currently collision data is just the thing you collided with. Now, I know Unity has its built-in um, like collision data, but the thing is it's different if it's a, a trigger collider or if it's a non-trigger collider. So I've made my own struct that I build up, and uh, I've made my own Unity event for it. And this is what allows me, in the editor, to pass through... Uh, here we go, on collision, collision data, right? So now I can pass this collision data through to other scripts that want to receive collision data, and then they can access, for example, the game object, or if I add anything new, I can add it there. So all I need to do in the script is set other.gameObject to be the collided with behavior. And I've actually made a, a non-trigger version of this, but it's essentially the same code. Um, I'll get into this other allies and stuff in some other future video. It's a system I'm working on, on in my game. It essentially allows me to, as the player, summon like a pet or something, and that pet will not attack targets that are allies, but it will attack targets that are enemies and so on. It's like a faction system. So yeah, that'll be an interesting thing for a future video. But what we've got here is we've got the trigger collision, and what happens is when it trigger, uh, sorry, when it yeah when it collides with something, it's going to call these two functions, uh, deal damage and destroy. Okay, so this destroy thing is just a temporary script I made. I don't know if I'll you know, ever replace it, but it, all it does is it has a function to destroy the thing it's attached to. And this allows me to call it from an event. And it's kind of useful, I guess. Uh, but it's probably temporary because you don't want to just destroy a game object when you're done with this kind of thing. You might want to uh, put it into a pool to respawn it in so that you don't have to, oh, sorry, to reactivate it so you don't have to respawn it in. Because spawning in game objects with instantiate and destroy can actually be, uh, it allocates a lot of garbage collection. Now, I've not done any videos on garbage collection specifically. If you know what that is, then you know what it is. If you don't, you don't. It's, it's just to do with performance, essentially. Um, but for now, we just destroy it. It's just simple and quick. And then we deal damage, which is the main part, right? So over here, I've got a deal uh, a damage target function, which takes in that collision data I was on about a second ago. And all we need to do is we say, well, let's see if the thing we collided with, so the game object, has the component I damageable. So if it has any component that implements the interface I damageable, which it does, we then get it. So if if not, if we don't get it, return. So don't do anything essentially. Otherwise, we will call the deal damage function on the thing, and we say uh, damage calculator dot get damage. Now, the way I originally had this is this deal damage uh, thing just had an integer, but I needed to. Uh, abstract that data out because in games it's not as simple as this projectile deals 10 damage because maybe the projectile um, you know went through some kind of thing that makes it do deal double damage maybe you've got some spell that you can place and projectiles that go through it make it deal double damage you need some way 
to be able to modify the damage at runtime. You can't just always predefine damages. So I've made an I damage calculator script and then I can in the editor now notice how I've got serialized mono behavior. That's from an add-on I've got called Odin Inspector. And that just means that I can um, make classes that implement interfaces show up in the inspector. So you see down here, I can choose what type. So currently I only have the static damage calculator and the static damage calculator just lets me specify the, t the type and the damage. So I have damage types like, you know, fire, water, like earth, air, whatever. Now currently they don't actually play any part in the damage calculation, but you know, one thing I'm working on is making damage resistances, but not so they're all hard coded saying, you know, if this, do this, if this, I want it to be using scriptable objects so that, um, and, and stats so that enemies can have stat resistances to certain types. And then that makes it do reduce damage. You know, it's, it's an entirely, uh, an entire complex damage system, but I'm trying to just focus on the simple things right now. So all you need to care about is this projectile deals 10 damage, right? It's going to deal 10 damage to the I damageable component, which happens to be the health system behavior. So the health system behavior is on the player. He has a health system behavior. And just like last video, I've got a health system and then a health system like this. And it is the normal. If the health system is not null, then return health system, otherwise make a new one. Um, and it has this get max health stat. Now that could be its own video as well. I could do my own uh, video on the stat system of a game, right? Uh, if you guys want that, then let me know. But I'm going to skip over stats for now. Just imagine this max health stat type is just a value for max health, right? 100, basically. Um, and we're actually calling this deal damage function. That's what you saw in the deal damage thing. You saw damageable.deal damage. So damageable.deal damage. And all we do is we pass that function call down into our class inside here. So this is just a essentially a wrapper function that allows us to call it in unity. But at the end of the day, this is just an extra layer that you could remove and you know the class would still work fine. We're just taking it in for the class and we're passing it into there. So down in the health system, where well, the logic actually is that we can unit test, we have the stat, max health stat, and at, uh, stats have a value like this. So I can get the max health stat of value, which is 100. So that's all you need to worry about for now. You know, in your game, you could just pass in 100 as the max health or pass in a float for the max health. If you want me to do a video on the stat system, as I said, let me know. Uh, I'll show you what I've got working for that. And then over here, we've got an event for health changing. And when health changes, the event passes through the current health and the max health. And that allows the UI to easily update. So we're going to raise an event and set the health and the max health so that the UI is like, okay, we'll set the first number to be health and the second number to be max health. And we'll set the percentage to be health over max health. Okay, so that's kind of useful. Uh, we have that event. And then we also have an event for when the player dies. Currently, it's just an empty. There's, there's no data. It's just they died. Okay, it's an event that happens. I'm not actually using this currently. I just knew that I need it. So I raised the event. And then here is dead boolean. It's just a way to check if something's dead. Like maybe you're not listening to the um, event. Let, let's say you use a spell to raise something from the dead. Well, you can't really rely on the event because it might have already been called, you know, five minutes ago or something. So you still need to check if it's dead from a boolean, okay? And then health is zero by default, but you notice how when you create a new health system, we set health to max health. Uh, so essentially everything with health starts on its max health. If I ever wanted to change that behavior, then I'd have to do something about that. But for now, that makes sense if you, you know, you start on your max health, okay? Makes sense. And then max health. If we ever ask for max health in here, uh, we just refer to the max health stat dot value. And I don't actually need this technically. The reason I made it is so that I could keep the stat private, read only. And then I have a public getter. So when someone wants to read the max health, it just returns the value of the stat. Okay. And this is the deal damage function we were on about the whole time. If we're dead, we return. Obviously, if we, if we hit something that's dead with our damaging projectile, we just don't do anything. Makes sense. It's already dead. Otherwise, we subtract the damage amount. But this... Uh, mathf.max stops it from going below zero. So if the damage brought us below zero health, let's say it brought us down to one health, well then this would be minus one and this would be zero. So zero is bigger than minus one, it sets it to zero. This is a way to stop uh, when you reduce your health to stop it going below zero. You could equally just reduce it if it's less than zero, set it equal to zero. But I find this one liner a lot easier to do. It's just a lot quicker and less, you know, less clutter with code. And then we also raise the event for health changing. When uh, the health changes, we pass through this and then the event args, which is a new instance of this class I showed you earlier. And we just pass in the health and the max health and store it here. And then the um, thing that reads this, so the UI can actually listen in and read these max health and health variables and then set the UI accordingly, which we'll get to in a minute. And if the health's now zero, well, we're now dead and we'll raise the died event args. I could actually make this event args be null. Uh, I don't know if that's good practice or not, 
Uh, I mean, eventually there'll probably be some other kind of arguments, or maybe I could even make this an action, but uh, apparently it's best practice to always use event handlers in c -sharp. That's the kind of recommended way by Microsoft, so I'm going with that. And then Restore Health, that's just a healing version, but that's not even that important. I haven't got healing in the game yet. I just made it. It's pretty simple. If you're dead, don't heal. And then heal, do the same kind of thing I did earlier with the uh, health damaging. And then we raise the health changed event, and it's the same thing as when we damaged. Okay, but that's it, really. All we do is we just, when we deal damage, change the number of the health. If we died, raise the event. If we change our health, raise the event. And that's basically it. And this is completely detached from the UI. Notice how there's no UI at all here, right? This works. I can just disable this UI. Uh, I can like run the game and I can go to the UI HUD and I can, whoops, for example, disable it. I can then go to this fire blast and make it hit the player by uh, enabling gravity. It hits the player. And then now, if I go back to the UI HUD, it should, if I re-enable re it, it's updated the health, right? Even though it was disabled, it still works completely. And keep in mind, my class itself did not, like, interact directly with the UI. The UI interacted with me, or, like, um, the UI listened in for stuff on here. So now let's actually get to the UI part. Uh, it's not actually that much. If we should go to the health system display. All it wants is a health system behavior. So I can drag in in the scene. You'll notice over here, if I go to the HUD and go down to the health bar part, this is the health script and I've dragged in reference to the player, okay? So uh, here's the player. This is the thing I want you to monitor. I, I could literally drag in any entity in my scene with a health system behavior on it and it would be able to display that properly. So if I just dragged in an, a random enemy, then its health bar would be displayed on here as mine, right? It's completely up to you. Now, obviously in a game like this, you want your health bar on there, but it's just nice to be able to do whatever you want, right? You're not limited to the player. You could display whatever you want. Let's say you had a way of you know, controlling something else and you want to display its health system instead, then you can just maybe make a public function here to set a new health system to listen for and you just do that, right? So you can just add a little bit more to this and then you can uh, override it. So I think it's kind of cool. Uh, and obviously references to the UI, I'm not going to go into that. Just dragging in the reference to the health text and stuff. And what we do is on enable, we update our display. So that's why even though it was disabled when I took damage, when I enabled it, it updated the display. An update display just says, um, oh yeah, so if you call update display, wait, actually, why did I do this? Uh, do I ever call this anywhere else? Oh yeah, so the reason I made these two functions is I want to update the display in two different scenarios. I want to dis uh, update the display when the event happens for the health changing, the event I showed you earlier, but I also want to update it when I just enable the object. But obviously when I enable the object, I don't know what the health is because I haven't got data back from the event. So what I do is I just manually read the health system's health system behavior, uh, health, sorry. So the behavior has the system, which has the health variable. The behavior has the health system, which has the max health variable. And then the update display that takes in the floats is simply there to handle updating the UI. It gets, it calculates the percentage. It then sets the scale to be the uh, fill percentage. So that's what makes the health bar kind of shrink to the side. And then the text is just rounding the values because they're floats to ints to display them. So this string is health slash max health, okay? Then up here, this handle health change event, this uh, takes in the event args, E, and then we can just say update display E health, E max health. So we can call this function with the data pass through from the health changing. And all we do on enable and disable of the object is just subscribe and unsubscribe. So when, the dis when this UI is disabled, we don't actually listen to the health changing because we don't need to. But then as soon as we're enabled, we'll start listening again, okay? And that's it, to be honest. Um, I don't think there's much more to show for this video. I'll quickly show you the unit tests, but obviously that's the entire system. Um, so if we go to the unit tests, we have, for example, make sure when you create a health system, your health is at max. So what I do is I say, we'll make a new uh, stat and then return, when you uh, ask for the stats of value, it returns 100. If you don't know what this is all about, this mocking, then I've done a video on that recently. Well, not, actually, I don't know if it's recently. It's maybe a few weeks ago now. Um, I lose track of time. I've got a video on using mock. It's spelled M-O-Q, the actual library uh, up here, mock. And essentially I'm saying this thing wants an I stat. Uh, so I'm going to say when it asks for the I stats value, return 100. So I know uh, when it tries to access... <coughs> sorry, when it tries to access max health, it gets 100 back. So technically, um, this max health and health should be 100 each. So I'm making sure they're both equal to each other, and if they are, then it passes. Uh, dealing enough damage to kill is killed. So obviously there's an event, um, sorry, there's a boolean for checking if something's dead or not. So I'm like, well, 
its max health is 100, and I'm going to deal 200 damage, so it should be dead, okay? Dealing enough damage to kill, the event is raised, so I create the thing with 100 health, I uh, subscribe to the died event when I die, set this boolean to true, which is false by default, so it should be true at the end because it's died, right? But then also, let's uh, try dealing, instead of 100 more than its max health, let's deal 50 less so it shouldn't die, so it's on half health now, uh, it should not be dead. Now, uh, did I actually do that one anywhere? I don't think I did that one because I didn't need to. Um, because obviously an event not raising because you didn't do something. I mean, you could write unit tests for that. It's just not really necessary. Um, but yeah, sorry, this one. If the health, if you're healed above max health, your health should not be changed. So I'm saying, well, the max health is 100 and I know I'm on 100 by default. So because of the test up here. So therefore, when I restore 50 health, I should still be on my max health, which is 100. So I assert they're all equal. And then finally, when you're dead, you should stay dead. So I'm like, okay, well, I'm healed. I'm on 100 health. I've taken 200 damage, so I'm dead. And now I'm going to heal for 50, but I'm still dead. Okay, it doesn't, it doesn't like, uh, because I'm now above zero, zero health doesn't mean I'm alive. So I just wrote some tests. I could probably write more. Those are just some that I came up with. And if I run my tests, the health system tests all pass. So there we go. So now I'm sure that code works, that health system code. It's separate from the mono behavior, which simply just passes through function calls and, and, and makes it. And it's just there as a way to drag it into the UI to give reference. So it's just Unity stuff, right? I've separated the Unity code away from the normal C-sharp class code, and it all works beautifully. So I hope you guys like this video. If you want to see more of these, keep saying in the comments below. Share the video. Just get the word out. You know, keep giving me video recommendations. I'll be sure to do whatever for you guys. Um... Obviously, my schedule currently is Unity videos on Monday, Discord bot videos on Wednesday, and website videos on Friday. That's all in C Sharp. So if you're interested in C Sharp and you want to learn something new, check out those videos. Check out all the links down below, create an account on website, join our Discord server, you know, all the stuff I have to plug as a valid YouTuber. So uh, yeah, if you enjoyed the video, leave a like and subscribe. It'd mean a lot. I'll see you guys next time and goodbye.